Welcome back to another Photo P process tutorial video. I'm going to continue talking about some of the tools today. Uh, starting down here in this area, we have the, the, the gradient tool, uh, the blur tool, and then this little magnifying glass called the dodge tool. And there's some other tools hiding under there that we're going to focus on as well today. So let's just start from the top, working down in this area, the gradient tool. And remember that the uh, paint bucket is hiding under the gradient tool. If you wanted to like paint a certain area. So let's say, you know, I want this area over here for whatever reason to be red. I can click on that. I can go to my colors down here, my color palette. I can click on red, hit OK, and then come over here and it'll paint red uh, within a certain tolerance level of the area I clicked on, but I don't actually want to do that. I'm going to hit command Z to get rid of it. What I want to, what I do want to show you is like, let's say I wanted to add a, a fade, a dark fade over this image. Um, I can go up here to, after I selected my gradient tool up in the top left corner where I have my, you know, my toolbar and all my options related to that tool. And I'm going to click on this one that actually is uh, see-through. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag across my image and watch. It creates like a fade, uh, a dark fade that that just kind of starts darker, fades to a gray, and then eventually disappears completely. And um, that, it, you know, might have some interesting effects. And it'll definitely come in handy when we start talking a little bit more about different things you can do with layers. So I'm going to hit Command Z because I don't want to do that. And I just want to show you, you could have selected like a different one and done something similar, but you end up covering your whole image, which is probably not what you wanted to do. Um, let me just show you really quickly. I'm going to uh, skip ahead for a second. I'm going to add a layer over here and just show you something we're going to be talking about in the next one that'll allow you to use this application in a much more interesting way. I'm going to do the same thing, but notice how it's its own layer. And if I go up here where it says normal, these are blending modes. Let's just try darken. See how it merges that layer with the bottom layer? It's a pretty cool application, right? Lighten does the kind of the opposite where it adds it in the dark areas versus the light areas, which is what darken did. And there's a whole bunch of other things like overlay. And I'll bring this up again um, later. But for now, let's Let's avoid going into that a little bit further. So one of the other tools you have here is the blur tool. And under the blur tool is the sharpen tool or the smudge tool, which is pretty extreme. The blur tool does pretty much exactly what you think it might do. So uh, I have obviously, like I've talked about in the past, we can change the brush size, the softness to the edges. And what it does, let's say we have a really strong focal point here in this eye. I'm going to blur it out. See, you could barely see it, but I did add a blur. I'm going to um, go back uh, to see, show you again. I'm going to do it again. Let's blur it. And it blurred just a little bit. I'm going to Command Z to back it up, and you can see it, it kind of pops back in there. Of course, you can change the strength. So I'm going to go to 100% strength, and I'm going to blur it. And it blurs a little bit more. The thing about this, too, I can keep going over the same area and blurring more and more and more until it's where I kind of want it to be. You know, you could see you could use this to blur edges on something to kind of give it the, the feeling of having a smaller depth of field. Um, you know, I'm going to go back here uh, to before I made any of those changes, but you can kind of see how, how that works, right? Let me show you another quick way to blur something. Let's suggest that I want to blur the background, but I want to keep... Um, my subject, which is the person in pretty clear focus. And I'm going to go back to last week, uh, the last tutorial where I, you know, use my uh, ellipse tool and I'm going to make a selection that's about the size of her head. And I'm going to drag that over here. And then I'm going to go to select inverse because I want it to be outside of this circle. So now everything outside of that area is um, selected. I'm going to modify it a little bit, right? I want to give it a feather. Uh, right now it's at 15. Let's give it a, yeah, let's stay there actually. Let's stay at a 15. And then I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to blur. And I like Gaussian blur for this effect. And you'll see, notice it has blurred outside the edges of that circle. And I probably should have done a stronger feather, actually. And you can change how much it blurs it. So I can go back 
uh, to make it a little bit less blurry. I can go more forward to make it more blurry, right? And you see, you get that blurred edge. You kind of get that small depth of field area going there. But um, obviously parts of this is probably what I wanted to select. Go back to that selection tutorial. Think about the ways that you can use this um, in kind of an interesting way, right? And I'm gonna Command Z to back out of that. Go back before I made that change, Command D to deselect. So that's just another way to blur things. I'm gonna go to the Sharpen tool now. And uh, similar to the Blur tool, I have a strength and I have a brush size that I can kind of play with. And the Sharpen tool does the opposite of what the um, Blur tool did. It sharpens an area. So I'm gonna sharpen her mouth a little bit more. So see how it just adds detail into those areas? If you keep going with this tool, Let's go to 100. It's going to get pretty crazy eventually. See how it ends up just kind of like if I keep painting over and over, it just becomes uh, a crazy pixel mess. So I'm going to go back to deselect before I did any of that to show you the before and after. But, you know, you can use it in a light application. Let's just say I wanted to sharpen her mouth a little bit. That was one quick drag over her mouth to kind of maybe sharpen her lips a little bit more. Okay. So that's the sharpen tool. The smudge tool is a little bit more intense. Um, we're going to click on that and I'm going to make the size larger, show you what this one does. And I'm going to click and drag. Yep, that's pretty intense. It literally smudges like as if this was a painting that was still wet. You took your thumb over it and just smudged it across. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why would I ever want to do that? Uh, with the masks project coming up, which, you know, deals with making some creepy pictures, you know, things like this could be pretty interesting. And you can also use it very subtly. So like, let's say I wanted to just kind of like make her look a little bit more creepy. I'll just like click on her eye and just like smudge it a little bit. See, and it just kind of pulls it. Notice how that has maybe a little bit more of an interesting application than going to an extreme strength and doing it a lot. I'm just like pulling out, you know, her lips a little bit. See that? It actually makes her lips look a little bit larger, actually. So let's go before I made those changes. See? Very subtle, but still powerful. Below that is a really important tool. Um, we have the dodge tool, burn tool, and smudge tool. The dodge tool looks like a magnifying glass. What it does is it dodges out areas that were burning in in the old days of photography, it will brighten an area. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna give it a larger brush, okay? And let's say I just wanted to make her hair a little bit lighter. Right now it's at a 50% exposure. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag over her hair and just see, it brightens it. But I have that really hard brush and it doesn't look so great. So I'm gonna Command Z, I'm gonna go to my brush and I'm gonna soften that up considerably. And then I'm going to drag again. See how it's a little bit smoother, right? So I can come into specific areas and I can brighten up areas. Maybe I wanted to brighten up her eye a little bit. So I'm going to make my brush size to be about the size of her eye. And I'm just going to brighten her eye a little bit. See? Right? And again, that's at a 50% exposure rate, which is pretty intense. So if I Command Z, you can see before I did that, Command Z, Command Z, right? Under that is the dot, a burn tool. And the burn tool has the exact same approach, except it's the opposite. So instead of lightening an area, it darkens an area. So if I wanted to make her hair darker, I'm gonna make this change. I'm gonna go to a, a slightly bigger brush. And am I still at a 50%? I'm gonna drag down and look at darkens an area, right? Let's say I wanted more shadows around her face here. I can come in and add more shadow there. Command Z to get rid of that. Command Z to get rid of the other one. And again, we can work in more subtle ways. We don't need to have the exposure up so high. We can bring it down and come in and just lightly bring in more shadow. This is a really great way to add a vignette to a picture. So I could go much larger with my um, brush size, right? Maybe I want to pick up my exposure again and I can kind of darken around the image. Now notice, nothing happens in white areas. That's because there's nothing there to darken. There's no value there to darken, it's just white. 
it can only darken areas that have value to them or color to them, right? So I can kind of like darken around, do like a subtle vignette, drawing somebody into the picture. Um, the last thing here is a sponge tool and the sponge tool deals with color. It can, it allows you to either saturate an area or desaturate an area depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to make, let's say I wanted to make, uh, let's say I want to make her lips black and white, which is probably not the best idea. It'll make them look cold, right? But right now it's set at mode saturate. I'm going to go to desaturate and I'm going to click over her her mouth and see how it got rid of that. Now, again, I had a really hard brush. I'm gonna Command Z. I'm gonna soften that brush up quite a bit. I probably would wanna make it a little bit smaller as well, but you see like that, I just took the color out of her lips. Um, of course, with Saturate, I can add color. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here. I'm gonna go over her eye and I'm gonna click and I'm actually saturating that area. Notice how it picked up on her skin a little bit and is saturating it. It is set to a pretty hard, high flow of 100%, which is really intense. If I Command Z a couple times, bring that flow down a little bit, it's not gonna be as intense. See, and I can bring the color back into her lips if I wanted to. So sponge tool allows you to remove color from areas or add color in specific areas. Um, you could also be really uh, creative about it. You could use a selection to select a certain area and then use that tool to, uh, you know, brush it out, uh, which might make it a little bit easier than just trying to rely on your ability to use the brush accurately. So that's some more tools. You have more tricks in your, your bag of, of tools. Um, and I look forward to teaching you more about Photopea in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.